the International Secret Police. Ceiling zero. Ceiling zero. Ceiling zero. Ceiling zero. In the last episode, you remember, Speed, Clint, and Barney arrived at Honolulu under assumed names and disguises. That same day, Speed rescued little Gene Kingsley from drowning at Waikiki Beach. And through his heroism, the boys became acquainted with Marsha Winfield, her governess. The little girl heard the boys call one another by their true names during the excitement of her rescue and speaks of this at dinner that evening. They deny it, of course, since utmost secrecy must surround their real reason for making the clipper trip. The capture of the criminal, the octopus. Clint figures that they will leave the islands in the morning, however, and thus escape the danger of being identified as members of the international secret police. But a note is brought to the table where they are dining with Miss Winfield and Jean. It is signed by the octopus and warns them to turn back before it is too late. Marcia takes this as a personal warning, saying that the criminal has brought tragedy into her life and that she is taking Jean to her father in China in the morning on the clipper ship. She begs their protection for the duration of the trip, and the boys promise it, though it may complicate matters even more. Just now, we find Jean and Speed on the veranda of the Royal Hawaiian Hotel that same evening. The water looks like diamonds sparkling in the moonlight, doesn't it? Earl, I'm talking to you. Uh, what? I bet your name is really Speed and not Earl at all. That's well, why don't you answer me when I call you Earl? Didn't answer because I was thinking about something else. And I wish you'd get over that silly idea about my name being Speed. It's Earl. Earl Fletcher. All right. But I like Speed better than I do Earl. You do, huh? But Earl's still my name. Uh-huh. And the water still looks like diamonds sparkling in the moonlight, doesn't it? No. Just looks like a lot of water to me. Speaking of diamonds... Is that Diamond Head Rock over there? Yes. Well, you haven't got your glasses on now. And still you can see as good as anything. Why do you wear glasses if you don't need them? Uh, but I can't see. I mean, uh, I, I do need them. I could just make out a big black mass against the skyline over there. Well, that's why I had to ask you if it was Diamond Head. You're always explaining things. It's very mysterious. There's nothing mysterious about it. You just have to have things explained to you. Nothing but mysterious things. But I like mysteries. That's why I like you and Mr. Dorsey. I think he's wonderful. Mm, say, Claire, uh, Monsieur Dorsey is wonderful. He's sure been a pal to me. Taught me everything I know. Of course. He's your tutor, isn't he? Well, uh, uh, uh sure. You see, it's... Oh, uh, here uh, they are. Enjoying the beautiful tropical night? Oh, Monsieur Dorsey. Boy, am I glad to see you. Oh, Earl, that is not very flattering to your little companion. Oh, she's all right. But she has so many questions. <laughs> and he has such a hard time answering them. <laughs> I can readily understand that. Jean can ask more difficult questions than anyone I know. They weren't either difficult, Marsha. Just why Earl wears glasses when he doesn't have to. And why he doesn't answer when I call him Earl. And why... <coughs> oh, Mr. Fletcher. <coughs> Here, Papa. Here, Papa. I'll pat you on the back. <coughs> Get away. Your pets are worse than my strangling. Are you all right now, Mr. Fletcher? <coughs> uh, not quite, honey. The only thing that can cure one of my coughing spells is a long walk. <coughs> oh, uh, come on, boys. I... I think we'd better take that walk right now. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> Good night. Oh, we'll see you in the morning. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Come along, Earl. Phew. <coughs> <coughs> oh. That coffin spell of yours sure got us out of a tight pinch, Barney. Sure was lucky you swallowed wrong. Swallowed wrong? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I was using my brains, kid. Brains that Clint thinks I haven't got. Oh, quit boasting. 
Let's head for the telegraph office. I must send a cable to the chief. About the jewel smuggler being aboard the plane? Yeah, this is the first time that we're completely unobserved. Now's our chance to really get down to business. Are you going to wire Chief Riley direct, Clint? Uh, Not exactly, Speed. His name, address, and of course the message will all be in code. I know the business. Instead of cabling Chief Riley, International Secret Police, International Building, New York, we send it to Fifi's Hat Box, Fifth Avenue... Fifi's hat bar. Uh, yes, we, we're using a millinery store as a front. Something to tie in with my French disguise. You see, Fifi is supposedly my sweetheart, to whom I send letters and cables telling of my undying devotion. But really, you're talking about smugglers and adventures. Hot dog. <laughs> so Chief Riley's Fifi. <laughs> <laughs> Can't you just picture the chief making a hat? <laughs> oh, here, here, quiet, quiet. Uh-huh. Even though the street is practically deserted, you don't have to shout everything, you know. Oh, we're safe enough. By the way, you're going to tell the chief about Miss Winfield and Jean overhearing us call one another by our right names? No, after all, they may have completely believed our explanation. Miss Winfield, maybe, but not that Jean. He's got a memory like an elephant. Well, at least they won't be able to give us away until we reach Hong Kong, if we're going to protect them from the octopus on the rest of the trip. Uh, Don't kid yourself, buddy. From the way this trip has begun, anything can happen. But right now, let's get this cable off to the chief. Speaking of our secret code, Clint, have you got the key to the code written out so I can memorize it like the chief told me? Uh, Yes, I have, Speed. And the chief was more than right when he told you to memorize the key so that you can decipher any of our messages to and from him without referring to the paper. I'll say so. There'll be many a time when you won't have a chance to look up the messages from the code key. I know. I would have memorized the key long before we left Alameda, if I'd known I was going to really be one of the secret police. I didn't even know you had a code. Clint never told me about it. (laughs) Well, after all, uh, I am in the secret police speed. The pride of the service. (laughs) Now, don't start heckling, Barney, or I'll never find out about the code key. Where have you got it hidden, Clint? Well, it's in my belt buckle, Speed. Belt buckle? Yes, it has a false back, which can only be moved by pressing a tiny spring. It's such a complicated thing that it makes a very safe hiding place. While the cleverest man would never dream that was anything more than an ordinary belt buckle. Gee, no. I've seen it hundreds of times and never guessed it held anything more than your belt. Well, I'll show you how it works later on. Now we'd better get to that code message off to the chief. And after that? And we'll go back to the hotel and get some sleep. I don't know how you all feel, but I need plenty of shut eye. <laughs> Me too. I oh, will sleep if Barney doesn't keep us awake with his snoring. Me snore? What's the idea of always blaming me for such things? I never snored in my life. Snore that. I ought to know. <laughs> Can sure snore. I wonder if that's what woke me up. Well, can't be, because he's been doing that ever since he went to sleep. Well, I can't sleep, so I think I'll go out and see what I can see from the balcony. If I can get out of bed without waking up Clint. Golly, this bed's creaking's almost as loud as Barney's snoring. Ah, gee, this Hawaiian moonlight's sure pretty. What was that? Sounds like it came from below the balcony. Something's crawling up the vines, trying to get up on our balcony. Clint, Clint, wake up. Huh? What's that? What's wrong, Speed? Somebody's crawling up to our balcony. Whoever it is, I have to fall over Barney to get in here. He would drag his bed in front of the French door so he could get enough air. Good thing. The snoring will cover whatever noise we make. Yeah. Will you slip out of bed on your side, Speed, and I'll do the same. And make as little noise as possible. Yeah. Mm. There. Now, keep in the shadows until you get to the French door, Speed. We'll wait for him on either side. Well, he's kind of in the way. He'll get more air if that guy comes through. Listen. Listen. Speed. There's his shadow falling over Barney. He'll be in full view in a minute. I see it. He'll be inside before we can reach the French doors, Clint. Yeah, maybe, but we still have the odds on our side. He's in light and we're in shadow. He won't be able to see us until he's clear out of the moonlight. Look, there he is. Yeah, keep down, Speed. And one thing more. If he has a gun, stay out of it entirely. 
Drop to the floor and lead him to me. Oh, Clint. Orders? Y- yes, sir. Oh, gee. Oh, Barney doesn't pick this time to wake up. Our visitor hopes so, too. Oh, look. Look, he's frozen in his tracks. What's Barney saying? He's talking in his sleep. Look, the man on the balcony's coming closer. He wants to hear what he's saying, too. Wait. The man's pulled a gun. Now, listen. You stay out of this speed. I'm going to crawl along the floor so I'll be near Barney if this fella tries any rough stuff. I'm coming, too. You are not. I've got to, Clint. Barney needs help. All right, then, come on. But stay close to the floor. Oh, Washa, you've got beautiful eyes. Oh, but I gotta be true to Fifi. Fifi, Washa, Fifi. Yeah. Uh, uh, hey. Hey, hey, what? what? Who, who, who are you? Help! Help, police! Keep down. Hey, he's got a gun. Come on. Get him. I, 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 I got him by the leg. Oh, Monster Dorsey. Help! Get off my neck! Help! Police! Hey, look out. Look out the gun. Quick! Quick! Where are you? Get him! Grab him! Speed! Speed! Get out of the way! Get out, I say! I got him! Sir, I got him! Grab him, Barney! Turn on the lights! Barney, turn on the lights! Look out, he broke loose! I can't find him! I can't find the lights! Help me! Hey, look out! The gun, the gun! Oh. You hear the lights? I got him! Gee, Clint, it's a jewel smuggler on the plane! (laughs) 